What's going on, y'all? So, you know, I'm reminded literally every single day, every day about why I'm so passionate about health, fitness, and um, specifically what we can do as individuals to take care of ourselves. I'm reminded every day um, because I'm always reading. I'm always kind of like, just studying different subtopics that are interesting to me and finding out how far off we are as a society, as individuals, um, in regard to the things that we should have been doing for our health all along. So once again, we have a topic here that I talk about um, periodically. And before I get into it, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. But a topic that I am um, constantly, or I'll say periodically, uh, regularly revisiting is a topic of sitting and how harmful it is to our health. Of course, you know, I'm sitting as I record this video, but I actually just got back from taking like a little walking break and, you know, did some crunches and some leg lifts and plank or whatever. Um, but I have a goal of getting up every two hours and doing about 15 minutes of exercise. Now that exercise may be taking a walk. It may be doing ab work, like I said, it might be doing like um, getting in some other calisthenics. It might be going outside and working on some yard work. It might be gardening um, or even combinations of those things, kind of depending on the day and the time. But nonetheless, I'm breaking up my day with some activity so that I'm not sitting down for so long. Now, again, this this whole discovery about how harmful sitting is to health really kind of kind of came out maybe within the past 10, 15 years, if I'm if I estimate correctly. Um, and the thing that I'm really wanting to hammer in this video is that even if we exercise, I'm the one who exercises a lot. But even if you exercise. It's not enough if we are sitting for hours a day, eight hours a day, 10 hours a day. Now think about this. So for me, I get up in the morning and then I'll, you know, after I'm, you know, cooking breakfast, helping my kids get ready, take them to school, all that kind of stuff. You know, of course, on the way I'm, I'm to school, I'm sitting down in my car on the way from sitting down in my car. Yeah, I go get my workout in. Um, but then I'm doing a lot of work on my computer. And that's literally from about consistently from about 10 to 5, 530 or so. OK, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now I'm breaking up my day with movement like I'm 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 getting up. And I'm trying I'm 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 aiming to be more consistent with this now, but my goal, like I said, is to get up about every two hours to do something, but since I'm working that habit in, it tends to be every two to three hours that I'm getting up and doing something. However, like I said, even if you exercise, it's not enough. It's not enough. Check this out. So studies are showing how sitting down for hours a day, independent of whether you exercise or not, is associated with all kinds of disease, diabetes, um, heart disease, weight gain, depression, dementia, various types of cancer. So um, I was reading an article from YaleMedicine.org and they referenced a study um, that I will talk about a little bit more later. And it said that people who sat no more than 30 minutes at a time had the lowest risk of um, early death from any cause 30 minutes so based on their studies the people who were getting up every half hour and doing something those are the people who had the lowest risk of early death from all cause so so what does that tell me one thing is consider this exercise is such a popular thing especially in today's culture i think often about how like with my grandma and them um Grandma was born in 1920. Granddad was born in 1914. I'm sure that exercise was a thing, but probably to a very, very small uh, degree. But the point that I want to make is um, 
it didn't necessarily have to be as part as much of the conversation i believe because people were doing they didn't have computers not that many people had desk jobs or not nearly as many people had desk jobs you know and so people were much more active not everybody necessarily had cars or necessarily the funds to maintain a vehicle um to kind of be moving around in a lot and i'm sure life was a lot closer to home um versus like us you know we might drive 30 minutes an hour two hours away to you know to and from our jobs and so movement on your own two feet was something that was a lot more commonplace back then but now like move sitting down is very much a part of our lives and i think it's it's really something that we don't consider a lot i read this this quote from dr xavier lore um and i think i think this is a doctor from yale and he's a uh, um, medical director of the colorectal cancer prevention program i like this quote he said he said what we need is a general culture change and that i couldn't i couldn't say that better and i'm always liking whenever i see people who are actually in the colleges and universities and people who are in the medical industry saying these kind <clears throat> saying these kinds of things because it's true it's so true that we need a cultural change our culture is one that has us sitting down all the time and that in and of itself is harmful to our health our bodies aren't made to to do that to be so immobile for so long we're just not made that way that's why it's associated with disease let me read a quote from this doctor. He said, do as much of your job standing as possible and move as much as you can beyond that. Extra weight is a cancer risk and standing burns twice the number of calories as sitting. It's definitely challenging. We all have jobs to do and many people don't have that much time. So do as much as you can. The key is to foster and promote a healthy lifestyle in general. This includes regular exercise, regular physical exercise, not smoking, Minim minimizing alcohol and meat and eating enough fruits and vegetables okay so again going back to what he said he said what we need is a general culture change i get it you and i live in a society where sitting down is what we do but the thing that i always try to emphasize is if we're going to really and truly take responsibility for our health we have to kind of come out of the way that our culture does because our culture is simply not set up to help us to maintain our own health so literally we have to be willing to do some things that might even seem extreme you know to others to maintain our health because they're different so you need to be trying to get in as much activity as possible yes exercise go to the gym go to the park whatever yes do that but remember exercise is like icing on the cake that's like the stuff that makes it e extra special the real way for us to get the most out of exercise is to make our lifestyles active. Now, punctuating your day with, um, you know, with little walks and, and maybe doing 10 squats or some push-ups or taking some stairs, all that is great. And that's what I would encourage you to do. Um, whatever you can do to get away from your desk for even a brief moment to do that, I highly encourage that now the the if you want to take it to the next level you would even consider doing some big lifestyle change like changing your work the kind of work that you do so there's more active work um you know some people do stuff on the job like getting you know walking um like little treadmills and things like that while they're working you know you may or may not you know have the means or ability to do that whatever but my point is don't take like a some uh um um how do i say this like just a minimum dose approach don't just go for okay i'm gonna add a little bit of this in okay now i have i've checked off the checkbox we have to be very very radical with our health because of the fact that it's just our society's way to emphasize things that are bad for our health so many things are bad for our health and sitting is one of them now, I also have a couple of studies here that I want to reference 
um, one study, and I should have gotten the name of it, um, but it said that sedentary time and the risk of cardiovascular disease is um, nonlinear. So there's a, I guess they're saying there's a nonlinear relationship between sedentary time, how much time a person is sedentary, and their risk of cardiovascular disease. And they said the risk increases at very high levels of sedentary time. And they define very high levels of sedentary time as 10 hours and up. Okay. And I would venture to say that most people in the United States of America are sitting down and chilling, you know, 10 plus hours out of the whole day. Now think about this. How many hours you, we're supposed to sleep maybe about eight hours a day. And so if you consider the day is in, um, Divided by eight, we got three chunks of eight hours, eight hours of sleep. And then you have, um, let's say you go to sleep at 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you get up at six o'clock. Then you have seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So then you have the rest of that time. So from six to 10 during the, the, the main part of the day, that's when you do all your living and stuff. And so that is 16 hours. If you're sitting down over 10 of those 16 hours, then apparently, according to this study, your risk for cardiovascular disease increases drastically. And I would contend most of us work an eight hour job, sometimes more. And then on top of that, we come back home and we're still sitting down watching Netflix or playing video games or swipe it on our phones, you know, and then we're driving to work and we're sitting down, okay? Um, now this study, um, I think is the original study from the Annals of Internal Medicine. And it said, the, the essentially the conclusion was this, I quote, both the total volume of sedentary time and it's accrual in prolonged uninterrupted bouts are associated with all cause mortality, suggesting that physical activity guidelines should target reducing and interrupting sedentary time to reduce risk for death. The total volume of sedentary time, so taking into account all of the time that one is sedentary, and the accruing of that time and prolonged uninterrupted bouts, so having long, just the just the adding of that time having these long bouts of sedentary time both of those so the to, so again the total amount of time as well as just taking the independent long chunks of time together so that means that in other words we really need to be breaking up our day with activity the best the best scenario would be to be active all day long really that would be our best scenario but the next best thing for our kind of lifestyle is to constantly be getting up. Like they say, the best case scenario is getting up every 30 minutes. Right now, I'm striving to get up every two hours, especially with the kind of amount of work I have to do with building my businesses and whatnot. But I'm going to aim to change that to like one hour and then maybe the 30 minutes but before I get up and do like 15 minutes of activity. But we need to break up our time and we need to lessen the amount of sedentary time that we have. So I challenge you to do an audit of your own time that you're sedentary. Because the thing is, again, if we're sitting down eight, nine, 10 hours a day um, and not getting up except for if we're going to get a snack or if we're getting up to go to our car or getting up to go to bed, you know, or getting up to get something to eat for out of the fridge, if that's all we're getting up and doing, there is no way that you're operating at your best health. There is no way. There is no way. So if you're exercising, if you got an exercise, you know, routine that you do three, four, five, six days a week, that's great. But let's break up our days with activity because if we're not, it is detrimental to our health and it raises our all-cause uh, mortality risk. All-cause, okay? Hopefully this helps somebody. Make sure you share this with somebody. Um, who you believe will find it helpful. As we get older, it becomes increasingly important to maintain and build muscle. Muscle helps you burn fat, stay mobile, and can contribute to longevity. 
However, many people have no idea how to work out to build muscle. My mini workout series on Patreon provides you with my body weight mini workout video library. These workouts use little to no equipment, which means that you can do them in the privacy of your own home. They start at beginner level and progress from there to ensure you continue to see results. Every workout is a full body workout, hitting chest, back, legs, and glutes, as well as other muscles in between. Become a patron today and receive access to my series of mini workouts, plus access to a digital copy of my book, Eight Weeks to Transform Your Diet and Your Health. By combining the workouts with healthy diet changes, as outlined in my book, you'll definitely be on your way to weight loss, improved health, and visible results. Join me at patreon.com forward slash Sean B2B Fitness today. If you like this content, you might also be interested in one of my books. Learn how you can take steps literally today to successfully manage, control, and overcome common issues such as high blood pressure, diabetes, and belly fat. It's all about putting power back in your hands to improve your own health. Get your book copy today by the links in the description or by visiting seanmcclennan.com forward slash books. Also, don't forget, hit the like button and subscribe and join my email list at seanmcclendon.com forward slash subscribe.